Time for a 3D printable key switch update. So I've been doing a lot of experiments with NinjaFlex and I came up with this design. Uh, it's not final, but it seems to work pretty well. So this is actually, if you look closely at it, when you bend it, it produces actually two kind of beam springs that buckle uh, when you squeeze it, if you actually can, if you can contain the two sides from expanding all the way, like it gets flat when I squeeze it like this, but if you press the sides, it'll actually force a buckling motion. And what's interesting about this, this is what it prints as. <laughs> this is what this is how it prints. It's just a, like a rectangle with two holes in it, and then you turn it inside out, and then that turns into this, right? When you turn it inside out, and it's actually a really nice springy spring. And to give you an example of that, I put I pasted it on I put it on a um, stem here of a just keycap. It's just a keycap, and it actually works pretty good. As a you know, as a you know, feels pretty like a really good switch actually. Obviously, it needs a body of some sort, um, but it's really quite contained. And what's interesting about it is there's actually two layers of actuation here. There's the initial. It's hard to tell, but there's actually a you know, you give it a little bit of force, and right about there, it wants to resist, and then it inverts itself, right? And, and it actually does what, like, a beam spring does. So it's more like a buckling uh, thing, not less, less like a beam spring, more like um, a buckling motion. And then as you reach the end of its um, force curve here, it actually stops again and wants to buckle again. So it's got, like, two, level, two layers of um, actuation. You've got that initial layer and then you've got this late actuation layer which is down there and this keycap doesn't really demonstrate that as well as this one which is just slightly skinnier this is one that I printed it's just slightly skinnier than this one that's the only difference um, and with this one you can actually uh, well I can feel it but it's hard to tell but there's actually a there's the initial which stops right about there that's like where it feels like it's bottoming out but if you press a little bit harder it snaps, you know, like a normal, um, you know, it's got that actuation. So there's two layers of actuation. Um, and this first actuation is very, very gentle, very, very super gentle. Uh, but you can definitely feel it. It's definitely there. And then it feels like it just sort of bot bottomed out a little bit. But you're, like, again, if you just press a little bit harder, bam. And it's super quiet. And I just need to figure out a way to attach this to the stem so that it can't you know, wibble wobble, <laughs> make it, you know, move up and down smoothly. And just as an experiment, I stuck it into a hollow version. There's no spring in there, if you can see that. That's just the cover inside there. And I shoved it under a keycap and threw it in here. And that actually worked. Uh, meh. All right. It's definitely got an actuation to it, but it's not enough movement. As you can see, it's too short. Just a, It's like a millimeter and a half too short. And it doesn't feel as good as... Um, you know, one of these just pressing it down. So I got to make a few changes there. But in principle, it seems to work really well, and it feels good. It feels really good. Um, it feels a bit like, let me grab it, this, which is a toper, toper switch, topre, or whatever it is. Uh, it feels very, very similar. This This model does, this particular one. These other ones that I've used, uh, just, where it's just the keycap, they're a lighter uh, actuation. This this is like a, a solid bottoming out, right? This is more like a, a gentle release, and then that's more that bottom part is more like how the toper feels when you bottom it out. And the best one so far in terms of feel is uh, this one. And for reference, I measured the um, actuation force on this and it's it, it's right about 70 so to get to that point right there where before the second level of um actuation is about 70 pop you know it's like pop 70 so i but that can be controlled by just see how thick this is that's actually like i think it's one millimeter thick if i make that a little bit skinnier that'll reduce the amount of force and another thing that can do that is if i make this the distance between the edge and where the hole begins, that's another way to reduce the um, amount of force required. And of course, there's a lot of shape um, options to play around with. Um, another thing I was thinking about doing is changing where this hole is and putting it at an angle. 
Um, so instead of being straight through, it's sort of like crisscross. And the, what that does is it actually makes it so that it it buckles a little bit later or earlier. Um, and like I said, if you look closely, that's actually like a beam spring. It looks just like a beam spring that's inverting, and that's what it feels like, actually. But technically, it's more like a rubber dome, I guess, where the rubber dome just sort of buckles. But of course, that's not a dome. It's got a completely different feel to it, and that feel is more like a beam spring. Anyways, that's what I'm working on right now. Just to keep you guys updated, I know I haven't posted an update in a while. It's a very, very interesting direction. And it's super easy print, for reference. It prints pretty quick, even though it's NinjaFlex.